What's up, guys? I'm back. And I got this nifty mic thingy. It has like a arm thing. A lot of people have it in the way. It's always annoying me that people do that, but a lot of people do that, so maybe it's okay. But as long as it's centered, I think that I'll be happy. So we'll see how loud it is. I figured everything out. All the problems are solved. Everything's okay. Don't worry about it. I'll clap, but then that'll be loud, so I won't clap. Maybe I'll clap over here. We got it. We got it. Let's give a round of applause to Max. He solved all the problems of the world. It's been a minute. Um, starter on my car died. So I've been, well, I was push starting my car around for a while, which is actually really fun. Uh, but I'm borrowing a work car and I can't record in it because the thing doesn't stick and I didn't really care to. Um, Power of positive thinking is important. I'm basically a Christian now, so there's that. We'll talk about that later. The other thing that's more important is, uh, I want this to be a little lower. Like, come on, be centered. And then here, there we go. Uh, more importantly, Oswald Spangler. Spangler, literally, the m amount of mind blowings that I've had, let me pull up my notes here. He solved everything. Maybe not everything, but at least, like, I'm just so pleased about this. How do, I, how do I even start for you folks? All eight of you. Okay. Maybe I have to get into the positive thinking a bit for a second. So, I still can't completely articulate what the problem I've been trying to solve for 10 years is, but it's something like, why is everything so screwed up and why is everyone so miserable? That's what I've been trying to do for 10 years. Um, well, and then I was trying to do all this other shit like, you know, give up on that and get external validation. And well, and it wasn't give up on that. It was, it started with, well, I want to spread these ideas to some degree, whatever I was thinking about, whether it was conspiracy or atheism or, or something. I just want to talk about them. I want someone around me who's informed enough on the topic to say something intelligent. Well, I guess they first they have to not be fucking morons. Like, they have to be able to think and process data, but then also to be informed. Because, I mean, it's nice to, you know, like now I have some friends who are smart enough to, and, or, and, and care enough to some degree to, to listen and to discuss it, but they aren't on an equivalent trajectory in, an, in a tangential direction to have something especially groundbreaking to say. But caveat of that that even just just people having being able to understand the argument and provide different inputs or, or rather arguments against it has been really interesting um so it's not just like a teacher student thing it's actually like a i don't know something something different to where, to where there's actually some value in it but anyway the, the point was that i wanted to have someone to talk about the shit with, right? And I didn't. And, and there was all this fear of rejection of like, I'm a crazy person and everyone doesn't know most, no one is seemingly like me. There's some intellectuals uh, are around me, but they're all neurotic and miserable and they're just like obsessing over nihilism. And then there's like the people who are kind of together and doing something, but they're like censored judges who don't think, or at least not on this scale. And that was like all I had. And so then I kind of met the like smart business people. Um, and those have been better. I like them. Um, where they're, they're, oh, they're high openness, but they're also conscientious. Um, well, and th there was also the really, really high openness, but low conscientious people of the internet, which is dissatisfying for me. So I think I, I, it's gotten pretty good. Um, one thing that I've started doing is I'm just utilizing all of them. It's like, oh, I'll hang out with my neurotic friends to be neurotic, and I'll hang out with my intellectual business friends to be uh, intellectual and intellectual about business, and then I'll hang out with my censor judger friends to just be like kind of normal humans, right? Um, so that's good. And he's already gone off on a three-minute tangent. <laughs> so good. Anyway, the point here is that I've been trying to solve this problem. And 
and I've kind of accepted that it's it's a seemingly it's a pretty lonesome trail, and I've gotten used to that, and it doesn't really bother me as much anymore that it's so lonely on this trail. But I still felt the weight of the world on me, that it was like, well, I'm doing this alone, and it's my responsibility to like fix it. And I saw everyone being miserable, and the you know sexual degeneracy and you know these horrible destructive relationships and and just everything that that has come with the the collapsing of the west and maybe humanity in general that's another thing that i've been thinking a lot about is the degree to which it's always been like this and it's actually was never any better necessarily like the amount of suffering was not necessarily less i'm kind of toying with that right now i think it's true that the suffering was less but the thing that i've realized with spangler is that it's, it's an inevitable, where we are is an inevitable place to be. I, I was trying to think of a more intelligent way to say that, but I didn't. <sighs> so some basic premises of Spangler. One, civilizations or, or cultures are just like organisms, just like people or animals or species, um, he doesn't say this, but I think this is also true. Well, no, I won't get into that yet. Okay, so cultures are organisms, and they have a fixed, finite lifespan. They can die early. Uh, like some of them can never get off the ground, or they can die pretty quickly. But just like a human, you know, you only have, you know, let's say 80 years, I mean, te technological innovation notwithstanding, you only have about 80 years to live and like you could die early, you could die in childbirth, right? Or you could die at 10, whatever the case may be. And, and we, and it has like, like, you know, puberty, like middle age, like all these things, it has these periods that are fixed. And, and at least from the ones that he studied, which he it seems like he studied all the major ones. I mean, Egyptian, uh, yeah, well, he didn't do Sumerian, but David, John, David Ebert, Get, delved into that Egyptian, Chinese, Western, uh, classical, which is like Western before the West of right now. Right now we're in what's called the Faustian civilization. Um, and the classical was Roman and Greek, if, if I'm understanding correctly. Um, and they've all exhibited this thing almost to this century. Like that there's this home, what did he say? Not homogeneous, home, homologous. All these homologous things like I can't remember exactly, but like the Trojan War was for the classical, what the Crusades were for the Faustian. I think that's right. Um, I don't know enough about history to really know or to particularly care about the exact specifics of each culture. All I want to do is figure out what the hell is going on with the West and uh, what, what can I do about it? Can I do anything, right? <sighs> okay, so, so they're all organisms and they have these periods. Uh, they have the culture period, which is the it, which is the artistic creative period where things like uh, the mathematics start and, and the origins of the culture start and all these things. And this is like, is the Renaissance the Faustian one? I don't know if it is. I'm, st I'm still learning. But basically, there's this, there's this creation period where everything's designed and then there's, and that's the culture period. And then there's the civilization period, which is just the slow death. So maybe it's like, I don't know, the culture period is, is like, childhood to teenagehood to maybe like your early 20s like where you build your life and then you kind of slowly well it's, it's actually probably more up to like 50 or 60 like you're building 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 and then you don't work anymore and you then you're just on your way to to death right um and so we've i can't remember or i don't actually i don't think i've heard it specifically yet when the decline of the West began, but it was when the civilization period started, what's considered the civilization period. And, and that, that there's no more creation, or at least, at least on a, a large scale. The West is, is defined, and now all it is is the exploration of it, or, or rather the, what would you say? Excavation, in a sense, of, of what what started it and what created it, right? So, that, and like, I think most people, or not most people, but at least this was something that I understood for a while, and I think that most, or some intellectuals probably also understand, is that, you know, the artists see things long before it's conscious and rational and, and, and decided, right? 
And I'm not artist. I'm not an artist. You know, I've talked before about how I can't understand creativity until I can intellectually, rationally dissect it. Um, I'm like the evil, rational intellectual of of the Western, or I'm sorry, of uh, the of Spangler's civilization period. And, and so the artists, they get all this stuff, they figure this stuff, they just can't have an intuitive, emotional connection, almost a spiritual, mystical connection with things, and they just barf their unconscious, or the, or the civilization's unconscious, or Spangler's pretty mystical, which is interesting. Um, or even like the universe's destiny's unconscious, uh, of the civilization's destiny uh, of, and they, they just kind of see it and reach into it and, and get it, and, and they, they go, they project it, and it just resonates with people, right? Like, that's what art does, um, and and so they create the shit. And I have a vague theory that, that this is the period when this is why there is uh, low conscientious, high neuroticism, high openness people in the evolutionary genome. Because it's like you look right now, it's like, well, what the hell good are you, right? Well, why, what, are they, what good are these people? All they do is, you know, sure, they're, sure they're creative and, and that's, Good, and, and, and there's, uh, what would you say, a supplementary component of them in the civilization, pay, in the civilization phase and the decline phase of, you know, they're, they're tapping into the, the pain and the suffering and all these things, and they, they still connect. They're still s supplementarily useful, but their primary utility is that they s s create the civilization, or they create the culture from the start, um, and then they basically coast for the rest of the civilization period and get taken care of by the productivity that it comes out of the, the creation of the civilization. And then they're just kind of fumbling around useless in a sense, being taken care of because they did all the hard work at the start. Right. Um, and it also um, leads to, I don't think he specifically said this, but somehow I made this connection of this is why all the left right now are liberals and these depressed deconstructionist, destructive, miserable liberals um, because, because that is the, that is the state, that is the civilization state. That, that is the only value and utility that the creative people provide in the civilization state. Let me, let me dissect this a little bit. Right, so what the, they're tapping into the underbelly, the, this, the, the organism of the civilization subconscious of deconstructing everything. They know that, that we're, we're on our way to the death of this civilization. Just, just as uh, I don't think I pointed this out, but it's another kind of useful component of, of, of metaphorizing this or even kind of fractalizing it is, is this, you have cells that make up your body and they're all trying to survive, but they're also willing to sacrifice themselves for the betterment of your body, right? And they're, they're all looking out for their own self-interest, right? You look at the selfish gene, things like that. They're all looking out for their own self-interest, their own reproduction. But what that creates is you as a human being. But you don't see that. You are obsessed with your own self-interest. And what does that do? That creates the civilization, right? You are the cell. You are, you are to the civilization what your cell is to your body. It's, it's looking for its own rational self-interest, and it creates you. You're this larger, higher consciousness Right, and you, at looking out for your own self-interest, create this super. Or you're, you're getting pushed into your own self-interest is getting pushed into the super organism that is the the culture or the civilization. Uh, I think I mentioned this the other day. Maybe maybe that even goes out further to like some kind of interplanetary crazy shit, right? But we're just in such a we're, we as a species are so new that the timeline is is so small. Um, one thing I just realized right now is that there comes a point, you know, in your 60s or 70s where all you are is death, right? All your cells are dying. Everything is falling apart. You are in the decline. That is where we are right now in Western civilization. And that is why 
there is so much neuroticism, misery, self-destruction, uh, you know, what, what's the word? The, you know, abortion, it's contraception, all these things that are preventing that, that we're no longer in a growth phase. We're in a decline phase. Everything's dying. Everyone's dying. And Spengler says that now, and this has happened every time, always. This always happens. There comes this time of neuroticism and, and degeneracy and, and loss. As we lost, as the death of God or, or as the death of the ideals that created the culture in the first place occurs, uh, always due to some kind of rational practicalism. There's a lot of interesting stuff. Like it starts in the culture, and then it goes to this uh, centropolis into a metropolis, like, and then it leads and it, and it die. It's the, the last death is in basically this fascist state. And the alt right has understood that. We understand, I, at least most, I think, understand that, that the next state is the fascist state, uh, the Caesarian state, right? Under under Caesar, right? You have a king, a ruler. This this this. What would you say? Calcified structure of, of authoritarian ship. And one thing I just thought of right now is that the Russia is already seemingly there to some degree. I mean, let's assume that that what people say about Putin is true and that he's more dictatorial. Um, the U.S. is not there yet. And, you know, Germany and, and Italy were, were the starts uh, of this. And I'm not sure exactly what communism is and, and how it exactly fits into this as of right now. But right now, the alt-right is pushing it will ultimately result in and it is inevitable and I, this was i this was true even before i read spengler i'm now even more certain of it that in the next 50 years we will have i mean maybe it's not 50 maybe it's 100 i don't we'll see how long we can you know be on life support so to speak i guess it's pre-life support life support is fascist but 50 100 years maybe even sooner the, the, the West will decline, in, in, I don't know if it's exactly decline, but fa fascism will be what happens. And, and the alt-right is the beginnings of this, right? The, the resurgence, the neo-reactionaryism, this is the beginning, and this is what we as a conglomeration, as an organism of the alt-right, are pushing for, and it will happen. Because, it's every, because we're, we're in complete chaos. We're dying. We're in, like, we think, again, if we, th if we think of civilization as a, as a human, the fear of death has started. We know that we're dying. And we will, we will scramble. Right now we are scrambling. We're, we're looking for anything to cling to. At least the most neurotic, right? And the, and the most neurotic see it the most clearly. And this is what I've seen since I was 14 years old. I didn't know that that's what I saw, but that's what I saw. That's... And, and this is why, this is, this is where the nihilism comes from. Those, those, those cre uh, it's not exactly creative enough, but, but there's something that of, of the people who give up, they, they implicitly understand this. I don't know how, because for me, it's like I needed to do the research for, you know, well, I don't know exactly when I started, but I mean, we can say 15, that was 10 years, but at least five years that, that I've been doing the research to figure out, oh yes, this is the rational objective facts of this situation well the people who just kind of i don't know i I'm, it's probably dude someone called me a hippie the other day for using the word fractal when we uh us, us red pilling him on uh race and iq and and the evolution of different races and all these things um and and the, this 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 situation of how everything is a microcosm of something else it's just really fucking interesting. I don't even remember what the instance I was making right there was. Oh, well, the, the, the instance was the individual neurotic, the individual, you know, drug abusing, neurotic, miserable person is w when, when that becomes rampant, it becomes a manifestation of the culture, right? And an individual cancerous cell might just die off. But once you have, I don't know, thousands, millions, I don't know how many fucking cells we have, but then, then, then the body is cancerous, right? Like, you don't have cancer when you have one cell that has this, this screwed up thing. I can't remember exactly how cancer works, but I'm sure that this analogy works. If I, if I looked it up, they're like, oh, yeah, cool, good job. Um, right, so there's always the individual death of the cells and, and, the, and the, the broken cells that get screwed up, right? Um, and those have always existed, but once they become rampant, then you have a cancer of the entire body or the entire organism. 
which in our case is the Western civilization. And ultimately, they will be what destroys it, to, I think. Is that true? At, le at least the cancer spreading, right? Because you have the death of God. You have all these things. You have this rationalism that has destroyed God. It's picking apart all the things that, all, that created the West in the first place. And this is fairly well understood. I mean, even Jordan Peterson understands this, that it was the, the deconstruction of the West, or de the deconstruction of Christianity that, that solidified the death of the West. That pillar, when that was destroyed, and unless it can come back, the West will die. Um, personally, I don't think that it can come back, but it's possible because talking about, about the power of positive thinking and things like this, you know, I get increasingly Christian, and I'm getting this kind of weird mystical sense, which is really weird, having had such contempt for it my whole life. But the degree to which I am starting to understand how unbelievably complicated everything is and how rational empiricism can never create happiness, at least for someone like me. What did I write here? Rationalism is incompetent to answer even a fraction of the questions, and I need an answer. So I will make one up that is good enough. Maybe the people who feel nothing can live like that. I tried for a decade. I can't. 99% of people can't. Right, so I'm probably going to become some weird mystical Christian person. I'm already doing it. You know, and all, the, all this talk about the, the utility of false beliefs, it's like, well, I could ruminate and, and, and rationalize and, and think, 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 think about how this thing went wrong, or I can just make up a fake answer about how, you know, I'm great or I don't like that person or, or whatever the case may be. I can just make up a fake answer. And that's what most people seem to do. Right? I, I learned this in my social psychology class where they're like, oh, why do we have these defense mechanisms, me mechanisms and all these things? It's, it's to protect our self-esteem. And it's like, I don't have any of those. <laughs> no wonder I don't have any fucking self-esteem. I don't make up any fake shit so that I can function. Right? So there's a degree of, of fake shit making up a necessity for it, at least now. I mean, maybe you can argue in like 10,000 years when we're super cyborgs that we don't need it. But at least now, we're so fucking stupid and frail and pathetic and so vulnerable that you're never going to be happy unless you make up fake shit, right? Whether that's uh, a defense mechanism of some sort or projecting or, or, or even just believing in that, that God has a plan for me and that there's meaning to all this, I just don't understand it, right? Like literally every day I start repeating in my head, like I don't even remember what I've been repeating, but it's like God is with me, God is with me, God has a plan, like this is all part of the plan, everything's gonna be okay, like all this shit. And I've been in this weird state where it's like, I'm just unfazed. And in the Spangler stuff, and this was the original impetus for this video, was now that I understand, oh, it's such a relief. It's such a relief. It's like, no, th it's, not, it's not parenting. I mean, it is, but, it, but it's not specifically this because th this is just cyclical. This has happened over and over and over again. And it's not something that I can fix. And it always happens just like this. And the rise of the, the alt-right and the rise of the, the monarchy or the fascist state that will occur will occur without me. And I don't need to worry about it all the time. That doesn't mean don't do anything, right? I, I, I thought this quote the other day in my head that to, to something like act as if everything matters and feel as if nothing matters. Interestingly, I saw on this really gnarly Christian lady's car that I always see at work. She has a bunch of stickers about how women regret abortion and, and all these things. It said, uh, I think it said, act as if you can do anything or act as if it's all up to you and pray as if it's all up to God. And that's the exact same thing. And it's so fucking crazy how like, God, people, rational agents are so stupid, dude. The fucking Christians figured this shit out <laughs> so long ago. So yeah, I'm, I'll continue to act as if everything matters, but I won't feel as if everything matters. And that's the thing. I mean, I'm already acting as if everything matters. Like, how do I get more productive? How do I get more? Oh, another thing that I realized was now that I understand this, what did I, how did I come up with this? I can't remember how I came up with this, but I realized that my job it's not to be a psychologist. It wasn't to be an IT person. It wasn't to be a computer programmer. It wasn't to be a hacker. It wasn't to be whatever the hell else I thought I 
want it to be. It's, it's, to, it's to build a life that I don't hate and get enough money so that I can retire, essentially, and go and try and solve this problem. This is what I've been trying to do for forever. And this is what I will be obsessed with for forever. All the, all the programmers who, who I was jealous of, that they were obsessed with writing code, and I thought, only, only, if, only if I was obsessed with that, then, then I could make money and have status and fit in this society, or, or, or IT, or whatever it was, right? And now it's like, no, no, no. One, the most, the most important thing is that I enjoy my life, which is totally new. The second most important thing is that I make money and, and make all these, make, do all these things so that, I can then, so that I can better enjoy my life, right? It's like, okay, figure out how I can get more done with less, figure out how I can delegate, figure out how I can do kind of four-hour work week kind of thing so that my life, so that I can spend more time thinking about this, Right? Without, you know, living in a bungalow somewhere, or, or, right? I mean, I could, I could theoretically do it poor, but I just, I just can't. I just, I freaking hook no, hook no Shuckleberg. I just, I like to hoard money, right? Um, and, and, and that, the purpose of that is so that I can then play with these ideas forever and solve this problem, this problem that I'm obsessed with. So the thing that I realize is, is that it's not, my obsession is not what will bring me my living. I will get a living so that I can do my obsession. And I hoped that, that my obsession could bring me a living. And that's kind of where the psychologist thing came in. But recently, it's like, oh, it's like 4% of psychologists uh, you know, are, are conservative. And it's like 10 years of my life dedicated to this. And how much happier... I won't even be able to use most of what I'm talking about. It's like I can't be a psychologist talking about alt-right and like white nationalism and all these things. So 90% of what, not 90, but like at least 50% of what I'm thinking about will not apply to my job at all. Uh, I'll be surrounded with crazy lefties. And, you know, it'd be nice to do some research. It'd be nice to do a little therapy. It'd be nice to do a little bit of this and that. Uh, I'll be making less money than I'm, probably like a little more money than I'm making now at best, unless I just like really hit it out of the park. And it's like, well, if, if I put 10 years into this job, it's like, pfft. I'll freaking automate myself out of a job with like, and just like be living on a beach somewhere, right? So, so now I'm not going to be a psychologist anymore. I concluded that. I am going to keep going to school, at least for now, um, because mostly for the, just that it's the best avenue that I've found so far for meeting people that I'm interested in meeting and constantly meeting new people. I'm sure there's a better solution to that, but once I find it, then I'll stop going to school. Maybe I'll just get my, you know, whatever so that I have it. Um, the plan right now is just at least get my associates for transfer so I have it. Um, and then if, if somehow I decide that there's some way to, to men, meld, meld these two uh, or m meld these kind of multiple paths into one that requires a degree, then I'll do it. So that's that. I've gotten completely off the topic of the conceptual and now into the personal but that tends to be how it goes. I guess last thing I want to say here, uh, which I wrote down while listening to John David Ebert. Uh, here, I'm, I'm just going to read all of them because anyone who's still listening wants to hear this crazy shit and anyone who doesn't already stopped. Um, so I have, the, the artists are always at the forefront. The artists pull from the ether of the culture. Think Dada. Think liberal TV, right? Like, the, like Dada um, was, well, I can't remember when it was, but it was 30s? 30s? Uh, it was like the first artistic form of nihilism. It was, it was leading the charge. Well, it's not necessarily leading the charge. The thing is, it's, it's inevitable. That this, this view that we have that, that, the, that, the, that the artistic people influence, the, or that the artistic people are causing the culture is wrong. The artistic people simply articulate that which is already happening. If we killed them all and gassed all the little nihilist artists, it would not prevent the culture from the decline. I mean, maybe theoretically it, it would, but, but it's inevitable, right? It's like you can't kill them all. So, so whether, whether they're, they're, they're both, it's both, right? They're both the cause and the effect. That's how this all is, right? Everything is the cause and the effect. It, it revolves in on itself. Um, you know, liberal TV, right? It's like all, all the creative people, they're all these degenerate, high openness liberals. They're both, they're both perpetuating it and creating it and seeing it, right? 
Okay. Uh, the great man theory of history, which which is the idea that that history is pushed forward by great men like Alexander, like uh, you know, you know what I'm talking about Caesar. Uh, why can't I think of people's names right now? Churchill, blah 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 blah. blah. You get it. Uh, Steve Jobs, Elon Musk. Um, the great. So the, the that theory, the great man theory, is that that history is pushed forward by these people, and if these people did not exist or, or died early, that we would never have had these things. Um, the great man theory of history is wrong. I alone am not destined for greatness. There are hundreds of me over time. Either we are there to catch the wave, or we are not. When we are not. We are relegated to depression and misery and nothingness. And all there is to do is bear the suffering. We will see which of the two I am relegated to. So that's actually slightly different than, than what I was talking about. But that was, that's, so I I've, I've felt like this just complete loss. Like I felt so lost my whole life, right? And it felt like I was born for another time or for another place or for something else or that I just was like alien and not connected with any of this at all. Um, and and I, I've always had this confusion of why, why do people like me exist? And, or in the, and I mean, I even mean like high openness, uh, miserable people in general. Um, and the thing is we're, we are the, it's like a groundhog, right? It's like, oh, is this person useful yet? I mean, we'll find out if I'm actually useful. I don't know. Um, but let, let's say I'm not. It's like, okay, well, you can die. And there, there'll be another person like this, obsessing over these ideas, thinking like these things, who, who is so sensitive to it that, that they just think and think and think and think and think. That maybe in a hundred years there'll be another person like that, or I mean, and that, you know that's that's a complete grandiose thing. It's, there, there's probably hundreds, uh, if not thousands, of people doing this, um, and I'm you know fucking stupid. So so maybe there's like a way smarter version of me that that will be the one that, that does it. Anyway, the the point is that it's it's just it's just a, a gene mutation. I'm just I'm just a birth defect, and whether I can be utilized by the organism of the culture or civilization is is a, is a is defined by the time, and we will find out if I am in use by the time I die. Uh, the the other thing that, that's relevant to to this kind of great man theory of history being wrong is that every great discovery, like think of evolution, think of uh, I think it was, was it Euclidean geometry, think of uh, was it Copernicus with the I can't remember it specifically, but but the, the later it's been found that there were like at least one or two other guys who had the exact same idea at the exact same time who didn't get credit for it, right? So the, the thing is that these these certain type of men come up with these ideas at the time that it is necessary. And if one dies off, there's always a backup. There's redundancy. God built redundancy into the system. Um, okay, so that's all in this too. Um, I try to save others because I know that I cannot be saved. If they would listen to me, listen to it, then it could help them, but I cannot help I cannot, cannot help me because I am either, apparently got, that got cut off, uh, because I'm helpless, right? So the, the thing is that, that no matter how much health I create, no matter how much function in my life I create, I'm still fucking miserable because it all, it's, it's just trash. All it is is to try and figure out this one fucking idea. And so that's, that's why my whole life I, would, I wouldn't even read these things for me. You know, I'd, I'd read all these health help books and all these things. I remember when, specifically when I first, when I was reading the drama of the gifted child and I was about 50 pages in and realized that I hadn't thought about myself once. I was thinking, oh, this would be good for this friend and this would be good for this friend. If only, if only I could share this with this friend and that would help them and make their lives better. And so I was forced against my will to care about myself um, and that got me here. But there's a reason that it, it just doesn't mean anything to me because this isn't what I care about. This is just a means to an end, right? So that's interesting. Um, I've always been only trying, I've always only been trying to find a value structure to follow, which is bearable to me. I've just been running from my suffering. So my, my friend asked me the other day, why are you obsessed with this shit? Like, why do you even care? And, you know, he, he's very nihilistic and he's always been that way. He hasn't changed in 10 years. And, and I'm, I'm kind of coming into this, this nihilism in a sense of, you know, for so long, it's like, oh, there must, there's better people somewhere. There's better people somewhere. And I'll be happy with the, those people. And I kept looking and looking. And I went to all these groups and all these things. And I'm like, fuck, no one, no one is what I want. And now I've kind of accepted, like, no, this is, this is the sin of, this is the original sin of humanity. This is, this is the brokenness of, of our being. And, and also the, the brokenness of me is uh, the birth defect of me, which I, <laughs> interesting. That's, that's my new uh, funny thing that I think of, that, that it's just a birth defect. Um, 
that may happen to be useful, just like evolution in general, right? Um, and what the hell was I thinking of? Oh yeah, this is just a birth defect of me re rejecting that which is which is true of human nature. And so now, now I can love everybody because it's like, I mean, most everybody, or at least my my like perfectionist of judgment judgmental standards have completely relaxed. And now I can find the the joy and the beauty and the love in everyone, um, and have the relationship, or at least have the level of intimacy that I've always wanted. And the thing is, he has felt that way for for ten years. And he's like, why did it fucking take you so long, right? Um, obviously, we disagree in a lot on, on that because he's he he. So I have the act as if everything matters, feel as if nothing matters. He has the feel as if nothing matters and act as if nothing matters, right? Um, but but I just I just been I've been trying to find a value structure that was bearable to me, and th that's what I that's what I've been obsessing over and. And, and it could be that this is what I'll obsess over until I die, and I'll find that, you know, there, there's, I can kind of build some shit that makes life worth living. Um, did I put this in the thing? No, apparently not. So I thought about this, which is that all I need to do is build my life up enough so that I can work on this problem. I need to be happy enough to get out of bed, or at least to get up and think about this problem. I need to be stable and competent and have enough money and support so that I don't have to worry about like, oh, I'm in the middle of some crazy fucking idea, like, which, which is really frustrating. Like the past few days, I've been so introverted. I've been completely disconnected from the external world and all these things of the external world. It's like, oh, you need to do your job. You need to go to school and you need to, you know, deal with women. And it's like, I don't want to do any of this. I just want to lay in my bed. But part of me is like, no, you have to fucking do this. Um, so, so the point here is just that I need to build all these things into systems to, that automate themselves so that so that then I can be as neurotic and intellectual as I want. And when I get in some crazy fit where I'm going to be up till five in the morning just thinking because I discovered some new idea, then, then I can do that freely without having to be stopped, right? Okay. Rationalism. Oh, I already talked about that. Okay. Uh, another thought that has made me happier about things. It's a miracle we've created what we have despite our, our species' unrelenting stupidity. But it is exactly the case that we've come as far, oh, the cause. It is exactly the cause that we've come as far as our unrelenting st stupidity has permitted. We built all this as dumb as we are. Isn't that beautiful? Right. So this is, this is the thing, and I think something that annoys me about the, the intellectuals in general is they're all like, oh, we're so smart. We're so much smarter than everybody. If only the normies would be as smart as we are, then everything would be better. But it's like, one, that's a rejection of human nature, right? It's, the, being over 130 IQ is, is standard deviation two, right? It's 2% of the population. 98% of the population is and always has been stupid. I mean, I don't know. You could say 100 to 120. What's that? Uh, 35, 35. I'm so fucking excited that I know stats. Uh, 15%. Okay, so the t so seventeen percent of the population is over hundred. Is that true? I think that's right. So, right. So as you, it's only one in six at best um, that is even, and it's probably much less than that because I feel like until you get like over one ten, you can't even really have an intellectual conversation. Watch me be like hundred and ten IQ. That would be really embarrassing. I actually have procrastinated taking a test because if I found out that I was like one fifteen, I would just be really upset. Um, I just I just I just couldn't conceive of that. Like I think of the, the, the average person and then I think of the, someone who's about a standard deviation above the average. And it's like, I'm pretty sure I'm a little smarter than them. So, so I judge it like 125, 135, but I could be just totally fucking stupid. Uh, anyway, right. So this, this, is, this is the thing. The, the beauty of the capitalism, all these things, the running of capitalism, the running of democracy, the running of all these things, all this stuff occurred with people being as stupid as they are. And actually, if anything, they're probably smarter than they were when we came up with all this shit. Um, so th this, this frustration and annoyedness and this contempt and pew-pew of how stupid everybody is, it's like, not only is, is it useless, it's, it's, it's anti-empirical, it's anti-rational to think that way. Um, like, we wouldn't have everyone or having a roughly, what, would, what, what is it, 35, 15... Duh, fifty percent, fifty percent of the population wouldn't be under hundred IQ if it was necessary to have fifty percent of the population 
less than 50% of the population over 100 IQ, right? Or whatever, you know what I fucking mean. Um, so it's, it's, it's only, we are only as smart as it has, has become necessary to create what we have created. Duh, implicit in the fact that we have created what we've created given the bell curve of IQs that we have now. So, so it's not as bad as you think. The stupidity of things, it's not any different. And it's not like, oh, if only we were smarter, then we wouldn't have all these problems. It's like, no, you, I mean, theoretically, sure, but like, pff, how do you, how does you make everybody smarter? You like, go solve that problem instead of fucking jacking off. All right. Uh, we are all miserable because we are in the decline of the civilization. This is normal. What, what always happens is that we start a new death cult to overcome the anxiety of existence caused by the loss of the previous spirituality. Right. So that's what's going to come next. Um, well, that, that was one, why we're all neurotic and miserable. And two, um, what's going to happen is, is as things get worse and worse and worse and we lose God and all these things and everyone's so fucking miserable, the new death cult will come, which is the, which is the, which is the new religion with the obsession of death. Um, and I feel like I'm, I'm moving there. I mean, I've always had... Oh, did I write this too? No, okay. Uh, this is going to be an hour, I guess. <laughs> The problem with the alt-right, the problem with Western chauvinists, not the problem, something that we're wrong about is, is, is one, that this is unique, right? That this hasn't happened a dozen times before. It has. And it's always had the exact same trajectory. So one, you know, relax a little bit. Like, try and fix it. You know, don't do nothing. But, like, Relax a little bit. I don't know. Maybe maybe other people aren't as worried as I am, but maybe they enjoy the the fight. I don't enjoy the fight. I was just fucking petrified and terrified by it, and just petrified by of anxiety. Right? Um, what was the point I was making? Oh, was, yeah. So so one, this has happened a dozen times before, and there's nothing special about us. Um, and two, is is that we as Western chauvinists, like we're, we're right that that capitalism by all the, measure, all the metrics that we were thinking about, is the best, right? Best standard of living. Most people alive. Most people surviving. You know, people aren't dying of dysentery. People aren't dying of toothaches, right? But the thing that we're missing is something along the lines of, that's not all that matters. And if anything, life, life is the shortest part of existence. Death is the longest part of existence. And, and also, and also, like, think of, let's use my life as an example. If I spent the rest of my life in anxiety, but I lived till 120, and I was anxious and miserable and living in hell, would you prefer that for me, assuming you're, like, not a fucking asshole, would you prefer that for me over, like, 50 years of just loving my life? You know, even think of, like, these, there's, there's these kind of heartfelt stories that I haven't heard one in, in several years, but they probably taught us in school where it's like this like 12 year old girl who like ends up dying of cancer, but like she was just so happy and joyful and she just accepted it and was like, this is what God wants for me, right? You know, what would be better? Like a fucking miserable asshole for 120 years or like a little girl who just loved every second of her life, right? So, so one thing that matters is that, that prolonging of life is not the only metric by which you judge the value of a situ civilization. The enjoyment of that, the, the beauty of that, the spiritual connection of that, the emotional connection of that is, is like, it's at least equally as important, if not more important. Like, look at us right now. It's like, we're these fucking dead, they were, are, we are dead souled bug men who will live forever. Like, is that better than, you know, 100, 200, well, I, I guess you could even say, you know, a couple hundred years ago when, when the culture was forming and everything was, like, think of the Renaissance, right? I think that was the cultural formation period, but I'm not sure. Um, like, it, it, those guys lived till 50, but it's possible that they were just so filled with mystery and wonder and beauty and all these things that it was way better than all of our fucking bug men lives, right? So that matters. Or at least, at least it's something to consider. And it at least it, it's, it gives me some degree of what would you say? Because like the ANDBs, they're like, oh, this is fun, and I'm like, dude, a hundred million people were killed in communism. That might happen again. How does that not fill you with terror? And they're just like, oh, this is a fun game to see how we can structure the world. 
And they have this kind of detached, childish, pleasant nihilism about it, right? And I think this is what I've, this is the value that I'm getting out of Spangler, is that I can kind of have that same detached, joyful, pleasant nihilism about it. That it's all, wow, what is that? Uh, what's his name? Can't remember. It's a fucking really depressed poet, poet, poet that's really, Bukowski, that quote that he has, I can't remember exactly how it goes, but bu oh, fucking look it up, fine. All right, well, I'll post it in the comment thing if I find it later. What was my point? Um, oh, yeah, so there's like the, there's the detached absurdity of it all. and just kind of gives you this acceptance and this detachment from it that allows you to bear it. And as long as you're not nihilistic in your actions, then I think that it's okay to be nihilistic in your feelings. So that's interesting. The, the death cult will come, and maybe I will join it. <laughs> Um, this is just an interesting thing. Infinity is the symbol of the Faustian civilization. Um, could that be why I've always been obsessed with the Great Sloan Wall? What is the, what is the closest we have to the infinite, the Great Sloan Wall, right? So, so I can't remember what the other ones were, um, but the infinite is, is, one of the, is the core symbol of, the Fausti, of our civilization. You think of God, you think of space, you think of all these things. Th these, these were all... We, we could see these things. It, you'd have to read Spangler to, to understand more. But basically, you know, to come back to kind of the, the more understood Jordan Peterson thing of, of we, 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 fuck. We interpret everything through our filter, right? And we only see data which aligns with the filter that we see. And there's all this data that we reject, or, or not reject, but we just completely ignore. Um, and, that all, and that happens on a cultural level. That, that's understood, you know, by Jordan Peterson. Um, but even further, that that Spengler takes the, takes that even a step further to something like we have these core fundamental pillars of, of of the culture created during the culture period that that allow us to see certain things in certain ways later. Um, so the infinite is is one of those core components. That's not particularly useful at the moment. That was more because I'm trying to think of all the fucking songs that I will write about all this crazy shit that I figured out. Um, we value life too much. Rationalist capitalism is simply a phase, not perfection. I talked about that. The Faustine is the loneliest civilization, hence why we brought Christianity, which has a monotheistic God. So this I don't completely understand, but this is an argument made by Spengler that I expect to have more detail on, um, that some, something about the Faustine civilization is lonely and that is why we concluded on a monotheistic god, right? So the, the Magian, which is the Islamic, they were stuck on like three gods for a while. And then they concluded on, on the one god. So it could be, I don't know exactly what caused this loneliness, but if that's true, that makes sense. Because there's definitely this, this feeling, this just kind of, what would you say? I fucking hate the word aura, but I'll use it. There's this, there's this aura, it seems, of loneliness. And it... I guess it would slightly surprise me if it were throughout the entire Western culture, but at least there, it's now, and it's, it's definitely true that it's now. That, but I, I, I attributed that to you know we have all these, we have these poor broken families, and and we have, you know, all this technology that's preventing us from connecting with people. But it could be that it's it's actually far. That's just a that's just a byproduct. That's just a microcosm of the macrocosm of the loneliness of the Faustian civilization. Um, so that's interesting. Okay. I am happy to conclude I have got all my crazy brain juices out, so I will hopefully go to sleep tonight before 2 in the morning. Um, that's all for now. No one will watch this. I've lost, lost people's interest, which I don't really care about. So I'll make something catchy and fun and useful later and then get a bunch of subscribers for right now. I don't care. I'm just trying to figure out Spangler and not ruin my life while I'm assessing about Spangler. Great. Bye, guys. See ya, squad. Peace out. You're great.